welcome back here at Memorial Stadium in Naperville for this DuPage Valley Conference showdown between the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South and the Red Hawks of Naperville Central. Mark Kruger and Todd Kibbe, delighted to bring you the action once again. And uh, Todd, beautiful weather, hardly any wind, ideal football conditions. We've got a sellout crowd. Should be a great ball game tonight. Just a little wind from north to, or from south to north. Uh, the ball will go first to the Tigers. They're going to get the ball on the after the kickoff, or on the kickoff, and we should see kicking off for the Red Hawks, number 34, Jason Nolda. So, again, perfect night for football. Packed house tonight, Mark. We're going to start seeing the fans fill in around the around the track, and like we did the, the last time we were here, and it uh, should be a whale of a game. Kelly Crosby is back deep for the Tigers along with Kevin Witkinak as Naperville Central kicking off from its own 40-yard line. Jason Nolda ready to get things going here tonight. Well, again, the fast start is going to be a key in the game tonight, Mark. I think if the Red Hawks can get off, you know, maybe get the ball three and out, force the Tigers to a three and out situation here early kind of set it, make a statement, set the tone, uh, get their offense on the field and, and have at it. They, they may have a shot at this game. The rematch of last year's Class 6A title game is underway. This is Witkinak. I should say Crosby. Oh. And Crosby is one man to beat. It's Nolda who finally brings him down at the 43 yard line. Well, that's about a 41 yard return. And there is a, that's a big plus for the Tigers because one of their key men on the defensive, or excuse me, on the, the kick returner, Chris Stetler, who tore his ACL last, last week. Here you'll see it, Crosby again, going off the left side, nice blocking up front. Huge hole there, and the only person to stop him was Nolda. Nolda runs him out of bounds, or runs him down at about the 43-yard line. But that was a big key in Coach Thorne's uh, plan tonight. He lost number one, Chris Stetler, who was not only his kick returner, his punt returner, but uh, holder on PATs. And uh, but that, that's a huge plus for the Tigers, starting off with their, at the 43-yard line. Yeah, hopefully uh, for the Tigers' sake, he will not be out for the entire season. Brilka, this is the pitch to Crosby, and Kelly Crosby gets in to Naperville Central territory at about the 41-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for the Tigers as we take a look at Coach Thorne's offensive unit. There's the offensive unit, Van Dusen, Schuster, Woods, Rogers, and DeSato up front, the big guys. Kyle Hubert's the tight end. Justin Penn and David Ladd are the wide receivers. Bill Gerlestis. And Kelly Crosby in the backfield, anchored by Tim Broca, the six foot, excuse me, five foot six, 165 pound senior quarterback. It's a penalty marker on that play mark, holding against Wheaton Warrenville. So that's going to back him up 10 after that huge, huge run by Crosby. Going to drop him back to a first and 20. Huge penalty early. Sophomore game played earlier tonight was won by the Red Hawks by a score of 17 to 7. That's a big break for the Red Hawks here. Let's see if they can take advantage of it. Split backfield, two wideouts here on the near side. Brilka and the pitch. And a host of Red Hawk defenders was there. Bringing Crosby down at the 34-yard line. And we'll take a look at Coach Joe Bungie's defensive unit. Well, up front for the, the Red Hawks, Lee Smentic, Tom Weller, and Mike Mamoon. Jason Nolda, Mike Selva, and Walter Bucky are the linebacking crew along with Charles Turek, Charles Verdone, DJ Johnson, David Barrett, and Ryan Richards round out the defensive backfield. It's on a gate of two on that play. It'll be second down and 18 for the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers. Opening drive of the Stupage Valley Conference matchup, Brilko. Let's it go, and it is incomplete. Intended for Justin Penn, who was in and out of his hands, third down and long. DJ Johnson provided the coverage there, but Brilka is completed 60% of his passes to date, Mark. He's on target quite a bit. That's He's racked up over 770 yards in the air, and he's got some good good receivers to throw to, David Ladd and Justin Penn. Justin just couldn't come up with that, that catch, so... 
a stop for the Red Hawks, and they need to they need to come up with another stop here and force a punt. Third down and 18. Todd mentioned Brilke, a 60% efficiency, and he'll keep it himself, take it up the middle. He's got some room and brought down nicely by David Barrett, the strong safety. He's going to be shy, well shy, that first down. Yeah, it looked like Barrett and Smentek, Lee Smentek, the defensive lineman, tracked him down. Picked up six. That was a, that was a set play, Brilke going off the right guard and tackle but not enough room to pick up the 20 yards required for the first down. So it's going to be fourth and 14. Barrett's going back deep for the Red Hawks. And the punter is Justin, Justin Penn. Yep, number 23 from his own 28-yard line. Whoa. Very good punt. All the way to the 18-yard line. Across the 25 to the 26 yard line. Nice return by Dave Barrett. Barrett. And the Red Hawks offensively, Todd, led by Christian Pearson, the quarterback, and of course the running back number nine, DJ Johnson. Yeah, and his and mate back there in the backfield, Joe Cherambolo. And their own 27. Gonna have to provide some, some power. Again, the guys up front that we were talking about Tom Weller, Ben Gay, John Walters, TJ Parrish, and Dan Coop on the line for the Red Hawks. They've got to provide that surge to get DJ the 100 yards plus that he needs in this game. First and 10 for Naperville Central. And they'll keep it on the ground up the middle. Trimbolo for a gain of about two. Second down and eight. I think the stop that time was by number 98, Dwayne Zimmerman. Red Hawk offense, there you see it. Weller, Dreff, Walters, Cop, TJ Parrish, Kyle Littner, wideouts, Maloney. Drop back, Trimbolo, DJ Johnson, and your quarterback, Christian Pearson. Second down, Naperville Central. It's first drive of the night. And this is DJ Johnson, and Johnson takes the tackle to the 35-yard line. It'll be third down and four. We'll take another look at Johnson's first carry of the night. Nice carry by DJ on that play. Brought down by Terrence Moore, who's kind of hurt. He's got a hip flexor problem. Going off to the right side again, the fake inside. Johnson goes off the tackle, picks up about seven yards. DJ again, averaging 6.6 .6 a carry. And they're going to need that tonight. Out of, they're going to need that type of production out of him. Johnson is the dot in the eye formation. Third down for the Red Hawks from the 35. Pearson will hand it to the fullback, Trimbolo, who drives through the middle to pick up on Naperville Central first down at the 41-yard line. That's a big first down. First one of the game. There's the Tigers, Tiger defense, Dwayne Zimmerman, Nathan Kobaba, Baba, Eugene Baird, John Garrow, Patrick Crosby, the front line, Steve Starnad, Bradley Camden, and Doug Arden. Also in the back, Eric Aster, Terrence Moore, and Kevin Wittkanek. Officials timeout. As we mentioned, this is the final home game of the regular season for Naperville Central. They'll travel to Maslin, Ohio next Saturday, and then they'll finish off at Wheaton North and then at Lombard North. Mark, did you realize this is the 74th meeting of these two teams? Todd, I did not realize that. Trimbolo. Up the middle for a bottom four to the 44-yard line. 74th meeting. It's one of the oldest rivalries in this, uh, in this conference. And you've got some gentlemen sitting down in the south end zone from the Naperville Redskin High School squad and the Wheaton Tiger squad. The 1946 graduates and alumni down there watching the game tonight. 50 years ago, they were out here playing banging heads. Gate of four. It'll be second down and six for Naperville Central. Drop back in the slot. The pitch is to Johnson. Johnson with a couple of nice blocks, a couple of nice moves across midfield. And knocked out of bounds at about the 40-yard line. Another nice run by D.J. Johnson. Everybody's looking back. No flags on that play. Beautiful job by D.J. staying on his feet. 
he beats a couple of the Tiger defenders here. A couple of arm tackles won't bring him down. There he sheds number four, Doug Arden. He goes all the way down to the... Ooh, he must have stepped out of bounds a little bit early at the 45-yard line, but still a big pickup in the second first down of this drive for the Red Hawks. First and 10 Red Hawks in Tiger territory from the 45. Pearson. And they'll pitch it to Johnson. He'll come over here on the near side and gain about two on the play. It'll be second down and eight. Crosby, Pat Crosby, the sophomore, was there for the stop. Again, this has got to please Coach Bungie. The way his, again, his offensive line has come out, kind of taken advantage of that, that depth that they, or excuse me, the size that they have up front. And they're moving the ball on the ground. They're not getting in, getting themselves into some into third and long situations. So, you know, this has got to be a big plus for Coach Bungie here early in the first quarter. Second down and eight. Right back is split wide here to the near side. Pearson, play action, rolling out. And it is incomplete. Intended for Nolda. It'll bring up third down. Flag on the play that time, Mark. I think we're going to have some... That's going to be against legal man downfield. Down Again, when Pearson rolled out to the right, one of his offensive linemen must have kind of carried on down past the line of scrimmage. So that's going to back him up 10 yards if they take the penalty. It's like they're going to decline it. The penalty is declined. Ooh, hmm. Gutsy call there. So it'll bring up a third down and eight situation as the Tigers decline the penalty. Third and eight from the 43-yard line. I guess Coach Thorne's logic there is one shot, seven yards, or eight yards, as opposed to two shots and, and 12. So we'll see how this plays out for, for the Red Hawks. John Adcock, number seven, is split out on the far side. Pearson has a lot of time. Coming out of the backfield is Chirambolo. Inside the 40 to the 38-yard line. It's going to be a couple of yards short, and the Red Hawks are going to have to punt for the first time tonight. Yep, they're going to bring in that punting unit there. You bet, may want to watch for just a, a, a trick play here, Mark. This is, a, this is a very susceptible area of the field. Saw it against Naperville North. Saw it against North. You may want to watch watch this this central squad because they have a tendency to take some chances and this might be the type to time to do it. Crosby is back deep. Molda fumbled the, the punt and is blocked and it goes out of bounds at the 44 yard line. So the Tigers will have excellent field position on its second possession. Let's go down to the field and Matt Dozen. Matt, what have you got for us? All right, thanks, guys. Uh, when I talked to John Thorne during the week, he said our special teams need to come up with some big plays tonight. He said, I've seen some things on film where I think we can come up with, with a couple of big plays. Already the big kickoff return by Kelly Crosby. There the block punt by Kevin Whitconnick and uh, Wheaton Warrenville South in business. But that was a nice drive by Naperville Central. Control the clock. Keep the potent Wheaton Warrenville South offense off the field. Back to you. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. Tigers. Keep the ball on the ground. Gain of two, second down and eight, Todd. Second down and eight, we're at the five and a half minute mark of the first quarter. And again, both of these, as we said earlier, both of the defenses very stingy. That was a two yard punt by Dan Cope uh, on that. They might have had a better opportunity to maybe try a fake punt on that play, but somebody got a piece of it and gives the Tigers some great field position. Split backfield for the Tigers. This is Crosby, and Crosby gets to the 48-yard line, where it'll be third down and about four yards to go. Crosby's averaging about six, seven yards a carry himself. He and Broca do the majority of the work and on the offensive side, and you can look for those two again. Broca has racked up over 1,100 yards coming into the first five games of the season. So... You know, these guys are just, they're an offensive powerhouse. They take a little time get, to get going, but once they get rolling that second, third quarter, they're, they're, they're real tough to stop. Todd mentioned that first quarter. 
Nobody likes to score in that first quarter, and it's showing here tonight. Brilka kept it himself, but no gain. Mike Svella, who leads this defensive team with 28 tackles coming into tonight's game, was there defensively. Savela and Smintek did a nice job. Nowhere for Brilka to go on that particular play. Brings up a fourth down, five, punting situation. So again, back to punt, number 23, Justin Penn, and back deep, David Barrett. Barrett had a nice return on that first play. Made a couple of players miss, got about a 10-yard return. So, again, stingy defense here in this first quarter. Penn, who got a brilliant punt off a little while ago, gets off a pretty nice one here as well. Barrett from his own 24. He'll come over here to the near side, crosses the 30, and gets pushed out of bounds at the 36-yard line. First and 10, Red Hawks. Beautiful return by Barrett. Again, did a lot, took a lot of a lot of ground on that play, but a nice job and, and all the way up to the 36-yard line, so good position for the Red Hawks. Last year, Naperville Central, of course, 13-1. and one. It's only loss in that Class 6A state title game against these Tigers. Wheaton Warrenville South, 5-0, and oh, coming into tonight's game. The Red Hawks, 4-1. Pearson, Boom. this is DJ Johnson, and he's all the way inside Tiger territory to the 48. First and 10 Red Hawks, and DJ Johnson has come to play here tonight. 16-yard carry right up the gut, man. Just a beautiful play, and again, great blocking up front by the big guys up front. DJ just finds that hole between Walters and Grayeth, and boom, he's just like a cannon shot out of there. Again, the quick fake inside boom there he goes nobody touches him until he gets in the defensive backfield right there number eight Aster comes up with the stop but the Red Hawks are now in Tiger territory for the first time tonight first and ten Naperville Central this time they pitch it to DJ DJ scampers across the 45 to about the 44, a gain of about four. It'll be second down and six. Excuse me, that's the second time they've been in Tiger territory. Doug Arden with a stop that time. But again, it looks like DJ is going to get the call most of the evening. The, the 5'10", 170-pound senior is just going to, he's going to have to be the workhorse. And if he stays healthy and they can continue to keep this, this kind of offense moving, again, Coach Bungie's got to be happy with the way they are eating up a lot of time on the clock ball control offense that's what you like to see so they got to keep at it second down in six this is Trombolo Trombolo to about the 40 and he's going to be close to a first down maybe a yard shy so it'll be third and short Joe Cherambolo doing a little churning right up the gut. And again, he's going behind the big guys, Dan Coop, the right guard, John Walters, the center, and Ben Grace doing a great job. The, the front three, not to, admit, not to forget Tom Weller and T.J. Parrish, the big guys, doing a good job. And down in the pits, Todd, that offensive line is pushing back that defensive line of the Tigers, at least so far tonight. Third and short for the Red Hawks. Pearson gives it to D.J. Johnson. He's got a first down and more inside the 30. He's going to be stopped at the 27 yards high. D.J. Johnson once again up the middle. We're going to take another look. Just simply amazing. Again, he's not getting touched until he's through the line of scrimmage. Boom, nobody touches him there. The guys are just doing a great job for him up front. He's not stopped until number 21, Kevin Witkanek, and Brad Camden, number 41, come up with the stick so DJ Johnson six carries 49 yards so far and not even through this first quarter first and ten Naperville Central and they're gonna pitch it to DJ again on that far side he'll get a couple second down and eight Eugene Beard and Nathan Kolbaba come up with a stick but again Positive yardage for the Red Hawks. They haven't had, they've had not very many plays that have sent them back. And they are just doing a good job of churning it out, pumping hard on that offensive line and blowing the defensive line of the Tigers off the line, giving them an opportunity, letting Cherambolo and, and DJ do the work. They, had, they don't have to go to their hurt man, Grotback, yet. Grotback is split wide here to the near side. Adcock 
is to the far side. Cherambolo is a lone setback in the backfield for Naperville Central. Pearson is going to come over here towards Grotbeck, and it is incomplete, just out of the reach of Grotbeck in the left corner. Well, I think that certainly proves that Todd Grotbeck is here to play tonight. He's not, he doesn't have any hitch in his giddy up there, Mark. He's, he's running pretty good. And again, as his dad said, you know, his, he may be a step or two slow, but his hands are still as good as they have been, and they definitely are going to be using him and going against those two little guys on the corners, if you can call six-foot little. Uh, with Kanick and Arden, Arden only goes 5'5", five, five, so they're going to definitely try to exploit that, that height advantage that Grotbeck has and, uh, and definitely go to him, and it looks like he's going to be good to go for the entire game. Less than a minute to go in the quarter. Third and seven, Naperville Central. Pearson with some time, dumps it across the middle to Churambolo. And Churambolo will kick it up inside the 10. It'll be first and goal, Red Hawks. Beautiful play by Pearson. Phenomenal pass. And Churambolo did a nice job of picking up yards after the catch. Picks up 19 yards. Here it is again, just a dump pass right over the middle to Churambolo, and he eludes one tackler, brought down right at the five-yard line. These, these Red Hawks, again, I, th I think that revenge factor that we talked about, Mark, I think they're kind of applying a little bit, a little bit of that pressure here in the first quarter. First and goal, Red Hawks from the five. This is DJ Johnson, and DJ, DJ Johnson will get stopped at about the three. It'll be second down and three as we have come to the end of the first quarter. Here at Memorial Stadium on the campus of Naperville Central High School with the score, the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South nothing and the Red Hawks of Naperville Central nothing. We'll come back with second quarter action right after this. Tonight's TV4 Game of the Week is sponsored in part by Horizon Chevrolet. 1540 West Ogden Avenue in Naperville. Call 357-6100. And by Brucker and Rickliffe Brothers at 355-7770. Hey, mister. You dropped this? Maybe the last thing you would do for somebody. Have a good day, sir. You should be the first. A message from the Credit Union Foundation hey, and your hometown credit union. All right, we're back here at Naperville Central. It will be second and goal from the three. First quarter dominated by Naperville Central's D.J. Johnson. D.J. Johnson, again, with the Red Hawks knocking on the door. This particular drive started on their own 36. It's been eight plays. Johnson, in the first quarter alone, carried the ball eight times for 58 yards. Now they're in that stacked backfield, so look for this hard Yards inside the inside the five. So they're going to pitch it to DJ Johnson, and he's going to get snuffed at the five-yard line. And I'm not sure if running the ball is going to work here. Maybe a play action here well, on third down. It's definitely going to be tough going against this defense from the Tigers. Pat Crosby came up with the stick there, number 30, the sophomore. But again, these yards within that 10-yard within that 10-yard line come in, come real tough to, to anybody, especially when you're going against the number one team in the state and may, potentially the number seven team in the nation, which USA Today has, has done a good job of, or has done, has placed them seven. Third and goal from the five. Churambolo is a lone setback for the Red Hawks. Pearson with a long count, and he slips coming back. And he's going to get dropped at the eight-yard line. That's a tough play. As Pearson just stumbled over his feet. That's a real tough play, Mark. Again, on a third-down opportunity at the five-yard line, and your quarterback slips. We were down on the field a little bit earlier. It didn't seem to be uh, seem to be wet or slick or anything like that. The weather's been pretty good. 
but um, he might have just backed up over a heel and, and dropped it out. So Jason Nolda now will attempt the 25-yard field goal, left-hander. Hold will be by Christian Pearson. Good snap, plenty of leg, and the field goal is good by Jason The first quarter, it was the Red Hawks over the Tigers, seven to nothing. We'll bring you more highlights from that title game later on tonight. But a good drive that time, uh, Todd Kibbe, and tough slip by Pearson, but Nola kicks the 25-yard field goal. Slip by Pearson, but an 11-play drive that took a lot of time off the clock. That's, again, what Coach Bungie, went, we thought would be one of the keys, is trying to control that offense. He certainly would have liked a touchdown, but they'll take the three. So Wheaton Warrenville South, as they return the kick to the 25-yard line, will start first and 10 from the 25. And once again, a scoreless first quarter. Scoreless first quarter, very stingy on the defense, both ends. But what we were talking, we were talking to a couple of the Tiger fans, and they say that this team kind of kicks it in gear just when they have to. This might be one of those times because this is a DuPage Valley conference. This is for the lead in the in the DVC. And, you know, they, they may not want to toy and let a team like the Red Hawks, uh, who are hungry, coming off that loss last year, to uh, keep them around in the game. And this is Kelly Crosby on the options, going to let it fly, and it is incomplete. Whoa. Crosby took a definite angle going back the other way. You could kind of tell up from here that he was going to throw that ball. And as I saw him going off to the right, you can see him. He's heading back toward the corner. It doesn't look like he's tucking it away. He sets up tosses. And D.J. Johnson does a nice job of closing on the wide receiver. Justin Penn. But Justin Penn, but it was a little bit short. And I think Penn might have had a, had a case there for maybe throwing the, throwing the flag, but Johnson got away with one. Again, the ball had to be in the, in the area, and that, that might have been the reason the flag wasn't thrown. Penn is the leading receiver on this Tiger squad. 11 catches and two touchdowns. Broca. I believe he kept it himself. Thought I was kind of blocked. Yeah, he was the ball carrier. He may have gotten a yard on the play. It'll be third down and nine. Sometimes you can just never tell who's got the ball when when Brilka, again, 5'8 and 165 pounds, is kind of tucking the ball into Bill Gerlestis at 5'9 and 153. You know, those are little guys. And you got some big guys going up across the front. 6'2, six 6'2. Six six you know, these guys on the front line of the target, you never know who's got it with those little guys in the back. So third and nine here for Coach Thorne and his Tigers from the 26-yard line. Opening moments of the second quarter. Broca rolling out. Has plenty of time. He'll keep it himself, and he'll get dropped. So a loss of three on the play. The Tigers are going to have to punt once again. Time to take another look. Lee Smentik from his defensive tackle position with the pressure. Broca had nowhere to go. Looks like he was rolling out to his right, setting up. Pressure comes from Nolda. Mamoon comes in, gets an arm on him, but Smentek does the final deed and puts him down. So good play by the by the Red Hawks. Todd, you mentioned Wheaton Warrenville South and the way they come from behind. They had to come from behind against Wabanzi Valley and a couple other teams earlier this season. And they are gonna have to play come from behind, even though they're only down three to nothing, but nevertheless have to come from behind on the road. Well, they've had to punt three times. This is the third punt, so. Barrett, Fair catch, Barrett at the 40-yard line. Three punts, no first downs, and the number one team in the state, you know, it's tough to do. You're coming into, and again, the crowd's going to start getting back into this, and when they do, you know, the players are getting, trying to get them pumped up. Uh, they got pretty good field position again on the 41-yard line, so again, the Red Hawks in pretty good shape starting this this third drive that they've had. Let's we'll see how they follow up that that 25-yard field goal by Nolda. Eight minutes, 51 seconds left to play in this first half. It's the Red Hawks up by a field goal, three to nothing. Wrap back in motion, and we're going to have a flag. I think the linemen were a little bit anxious on that particular play for the Red Hawks. Legal procedure is the call. Back them up five, so they're going to start from their 36-yard line. And first and 15 for Naperville Central in DuPage Valley Conference. Naperville North is at Wheaton North, West Chicago at Glenbard East. Just got a score early in the first. Wheaton 
excuse me, Naperville North 15 and Wheaton North 3. So we've got the cross cross city rivalries going on tonight, Mark. John Adcock is split wide on the far side for Christian Pearson. Brought that goes in motion. Pearson will hand it off to DJ Johnson with a couple of holes across midfield. All the way to the 39-yard line. It'll be first and 10 for Naperville Central. You know, I can't believe how much room DJ Johnson has had. His offensive linemen are doing a fantastic job of blowing open some holes. Look at this. He doesn't get touched until he's past the midfield stripe, and then he just gets bounced around a couple of times all the way down to the 38, 39-yard line. Phenomenal running by DJ. First and 10 Red Hawks from the 39-yard line. This is Turambolo, the pullback, and he'll get across the 35. A nice second effort. Gain of about three. Second down and seven for Coach Joe Bungie. And then old Joe Turambolo just gets the tough yards up the gut. You know, you let DJ do the, do the fleet stuff on the outside. DJ's already got 79 yards and 10 carries. That's 7.9 yards a carry. He is just doing a great job. And again, got to got to give a lot of the credit to that offensive line. They're doing a phenomenal job of controlling the line of scrimmage. Gain of four, second down and six. It's Johnson again, breaks a couple of tackles. He'll get to the 27 yard line. Should be enough for a central first down. It's definitely enough for a first down with the spot. Down to the 27-yard line. Mark, I, I don't understand. I don't understand how DJ is getting these type of yards this early in the game. Again, he is just uh, the line. I can't. I can't reiterate it enough. The line is just doing a great job when you get that type of push uh, to pick up seven yards. I mean, that that was pretty cluttered up, and, and they just moved. They moved that entire line five yards off the ball. First and 10, Naperville Central driving once again here in the second quarter. Pearson, before he pitched it to D.J. Johnson, another flag on the play. It's going to be a delay a game call against Naperville Central, so that will pull them back five. It'll be first and 15. That's got to hurt a little bit. Todd, just a reminder that tonight's game is being brought to you by Adamos at 778-0325. That's 778-0325. Address is 1550 North Route 59 in the Pebblewood Plaza in Naperville. Only $4.95 per person. They also do corporate catering as well. You feasted on that before the game here tonight. Oh, just great. First and 15, Pearson to the air. And it is complete to number 43. That's Kyle Littner, the tight end. Nice catch by Littner. Littner is, again, pressed into duty. Uh, this is the first time we've seen him with a nice roll by Pearson in delivering the ball to Littner. Picks up about four. Again, the yards get, get kind of tough down here uh, around that 20-yard line. The, the field gets short. And you've got to, uh, you know, I, I'd be trying to hit D.J. Johnson again. Second down and six for Naperville Central. Pearson instead goes to the air. Out of the backfield is Churambolo. And Churambolo gets inside the 20 to about the 18-yard line. It's going to bring up about a third and two situation. Pearson ended up at the 45-yard line on that beautiful screen play. Again, just a nice job and a good a good offensive game plan for Coach Bungie. I mean, he's mixing it up. He's he's hitting the he's hitting the offensive line. Is just doing a great job opening the holes for DJ Johnson. Cherambolo getting their tough yards up front, and then it's just the little screen passes across the top. They're picking up the yards they need. They're moving the ball well, doing a great job. It's being very patient, letting the play develop, hitting the players coming out out of the backfield, letting the play develop. High formation Red Hawks, third down and three. And we're going to have another flag. And Todd, once again, it's a delay of game against Central. And third and down, third down and two, Todd, you can't do that. No, you can't do that. And this team, you know, at the sixth game of the season, you think that you got most of the bugs worked out, especially when, when you're playing the number one team in the state, number one, number two, depending upon which poll you're looking at. But obviously one of the better teams in the state. Just... 
you can't make those mental mistakes and they may come back they could come back to haunt you later on you know it's tough it's tough enough to pick up third three and or with a third down and and uh two but now you've got third and seven third and seven from the 24. Pearson to the air across the middle, and it is incomplete. Tended for Maloney, and that'll bring up a fourth down situation here, and kind of a tough call here for Coach Bungie. Yeah, it is, but it looks like uh, uh, Nold is looking for the uh, for the call. There, he's got the tee coming in, so they're going to give it a, give it a shot. Place the ball at the 25, so you add 17. Well, we saw him hit from 25 with plenty of legs, so right. Excuse me. Yeah, so this is going to be a, a 41-yard line, 41-yard attempt. Excuse me. Christian Pearson on the hole. They'll spot it at the 31. Nolda's field goal attempt. Whoa. Is no good, and that is just short. Ty, that was very, very close. Just short and a little bit to the left. So... Six minutes, one second left to play. We'll keep it here in the first half. It's been, well, a 25-yard field goal by Jason Nolda. That's all the scoring so far in this ball game. And we'll go down on the field to Matt Dolan. And Matt, what have you got for us? All right, thanks, gentlemen. I was over on the Wheaton Warrenville South sidelines. Coaching staff not happy with the way they're blocking up front. Naperville Central is really pursuing hard. They're shooting the gaps. Look for Wheaton Warrenville South to counter with some draw plays, maybe a screen pass out of the backfield. Kelly Crosby, a big day last week, four receptions, 66 yards. He had a 64-yarder against Wheaton North. They were very successful running some draw plays and throwing to the fullback and running back out of the backfield. Back to you guys. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. And once again, it was Crosby. Well, they certainly have got to do a little bit better of trying to get their offensive line into the ball game because as Matt said uh, the coach is a little bit upset with the way their play's been going um, but the the Red Hawk defense has come in here with a very good game plan both offensively and defensively kind of stuffed them on the offensive side and um, you know but but you can't really when you score 34 points a game you know they're going to come up with some points uh, at some point in time Crosby with a pickup of three second down and seven through but nowhere to go Defensively, it was number 85 for the Smentix was there. Well, Central has seen this this offensive scheme a couple of times. I think North runs it with the with the three backs, so they're they're used to seeing it and they're doing a good job defending it. Again, a, a pickup of a couple here, third and about six for the first down. We've got about four, just under five minutes to go in the first half. If you coach Bungie, you got to be pretty happy with the way your team's, you know, pretty much controlled the, the line of scrimmage and, and done what they wanted to do tonight. So we'll see if the Red Hawk defense can hold one right here. Third and six. Broke it to the air. He's got some time, and he's got his receiver. Beautiful pass and reception. James Stennett. And that's going to be a first down, but we'll hold everything because oh. there's a flag on the play in the backfield of the Tigers. Got a little conference down here. And they're walking to the right, which <laughs> may indicate that it is against the Tigers. That's good news for the Red Hawk fans. Wow. Beautiful pass by Rick. Again, you can see why the guy's 60%, uh, almost 60% through the fifth game of the season. Accumulated almost 800 yards in those first five games. Just delivered the ball perfectly down there to Stennett. But a holding call. Wow, that hurts. What was a first down is now third and long. Third and about 16 for the Tigers. At the 14-yard line. Brilka, they're going to pitch it, and the reverse. And did not fool this Red Hawk defense. That was big, number 73. Mike Mamoon. Mike Mamoon, a foot, 210-pound senior, stood his ground and made the hit. Take another look at it here. Stood his ground and just kind of rushed, continued to rush, and boom, right into the arms goes number 23, or excuse me, Justin Penn on the reverse. Great play by Mamoon staying home and forcing that fourth down. Now a punting situation all the way back deep into the end zone for the Tigers. So the Tigers 
Punting from their own end zone. Barrett standing at the 47 yard line. Another pretty good punt by Penn. Barrett from the 42 yard line. He'll come over here to the near side. Looking for a block. In the third, inside the 30, still going. And finally tackled, and it's loose. He got stripped. Bodies are down at the 20 yard line. It looks like the Tigers have Tigers got it. Tigers come up with the ball. Wow, big, big turnover, Mark. A tremendous return by Barrett, but at the very end was just stripped of the ball, and the Tigers will take over. Well, beautiful return by Barrett. Turns, turns the corner on the, on the punt return, but just gets tied up with one of the defenders. The Tigers strip the ball, and... And after that 40, excuse me, 20 yard return from the 42 down to the 20, uh, fumble and the ball goes back and there's the first big break of the game, Mark. Todd, the Tigers with only seven yards rushing in this first half. Brilka now first and 10, new life for the Tigers from the 20. Pass is complete out of the backfield. Brilka's pass. Brought down at the 30-yard line. It's going to be close to a first down for the Tigers. Well, now there's, there's another turnover. Red Hawks say they have it. We haven't seen an indication yet. I don't think. I think the ball was down. Stays with the Tigers. We'll take a look at it again. Under three minutes. But again, Broca trying to do the same type of same type of scheme that the. The Red Hawks had been running just a little screen pass over the front. Picks up about eight or nine yards, so puts the Tigers in pretty good position. Second down and one. First down for the Tigers. Crosby was the ball carrier, brought down by Turek. Crosby gets across the 35 to the 36 yard line. It'll be first and 10 for the Tigers with two and a half minutes left to play in this first half. Boy, that, that fumble, Mark. Yeah, there's Coach Bungie, and he's probably still fuming about that turnover on that punt return. He's down there all by himself, and he is not happy with the way things have gone. He's standing all the way down at the, about the 38 yard line. The rest of the team is, is at the other end of the field. So first and 10, Tigers from their own 36. Brilka to the air, plenty of time. He's got his man Crosby out of the backfield all the way to the 32 yard line. Uh, it's not Crosby. That was Penn coming across, but as it's gonna come back, Mark, penalty again. Again, Brilka this time had enough time to set up beautiful pass delivery, and there's Penn goes all the way down to the 42 yard line, but we're backing it up again. Penalty again against the Tigers. That's twice in this quarter that the Tigers have gotten called for a holding penalty. You can see the 77 there on the helmets of the on the left side of the helmets of the Tigers, Mark. You know who that's for? No, I don't. Fill me the in. The ghost. Ah. Red Grange. Okay. Red Grange is an alumnus of the Wheaton High School Tigers. And they apparently have got that everywhere. Ball is at the 23-yard line. They've got to get all the way to the 46-yard line for a first down. So first and a whole whole lot of yards here. First and 24, and they're on the 22. Broca will keep it himself. Gets across the 30 to the 36-yard line, where he is brought down hard by Jason Nolda. Well, those were the two key players of the game, or as we started this game, Broca one and Nolda two. And Nolda brings him down hard right at about the 36-yard line. But nice fake there by Tim. Runs off to his left, gets a good block there, and then boom. Oh. <laughs> He's kind of horse collared, brought down at the 36-yard line by Jason Nolda. So, again, two of the marquee players that we talked about, boom, meeting each other, back, saying hello. Back to the original line of scrimmage. Second down and 10 for Wheaton Warrenville South. Broca to the air once again. Pass is complete. Pass. 
Right at the first down marker. Penn once again, and depending on the spot, it looks like they will have a first down. So first and 10 Tigers from the 47. Well, Coach Bungie's got to be a little bit concerned now. The momentum is kind of moving back toward the toward the Tigers. And we've got just, uh, we just crossed the minute mark. So we're into the last, part, deep into the half here. Red Hawks got to come up with a stop. They don't want to, don't want anything crazy to happen here. Who just joined us? Three to nothing. Naperville Central on top. Under a minute to go in this first half. Brilka to the air over here to the near side, and it's picked off. Charles Verdone picks it off at the 33-yard line. He went up and grabbed that one, Todd. Wow, what a play by Charles Verdone. He's 5'11", 185-pound senior, playing the corner. Did a nice job of just walking all the way to the top of that ladder. Broke again, finally getting a little bit of time to deliver the ball. Beautiful pass. Boom! Jumps right up at the 32-yard line. Verdoni comes up with, this, up with the big pick late in the first half. 33 seconds to go in this first half. Christian Pearson hands it off to the fullback, Trumbolo, who gets across the 35 to the 36-yard line, a gain of two. Well, a nice, I think that's probably the way to do it. Just kind of, you've got yourself a lead if you're Coach Bungie. He got, <laughs> the fumble did not hurt him, although he was pretty upset about it, but it didn't hurt him. Uh, where the momentum looked like it was switching to the to the Tigers. That big interception by, by Verdoni late in the half. It's going to end pretty much in the first half. So, Central has done a nice job of controlling the offensive line picking up the pace on the defense. DJ Johnson doing a good job. Hey, you know, they're in this ballgame. We are at halftime here at Memorial Stadium with the Naperville Central Redhawks leading the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South by a score of three to nothing. We'll take this timeout and come back with second half action right after this timeout. Back here at halftime at Memorial Stadium. Red Hawks leading it by a score of three to nothing. Mark Kruger and Todd Kibbe. Todd, what well, you got first half stats for us? Well, three to nothing doesn't pose too many stats, but there are some keys that stand out. DJ Johnson, 11 carries, 86 yards. Joe Cherambolo, six carries, 22 yards. The team has got 104 total. They've, they've had uh, the 10 play scoring drive, a 25 yard field goal, but each time they've gotten in the red zone, they've had a penalty. Dave Foster kicking it away for Wheaton Warrenville South. A good kick all the way to the end Foster's zone. Kick carries into the end zone. It'll be first and 10 for Naperville Central, Central at the 20. And, and again, and for the yard. Tigers, they've had five opportunities, five, four times, four and out, punted each time. Let's go down in the field to start off this second half to Matt Dozen. Matt, what have you got for us? All right, thanks, guys. I talked to both coaching staffs. John Thorne said, hey, we just didn't play a real smart first half. A lot of costly penalties. They're holding. they got to improve their technique because the officials are watching in this ballgame. Sometimes you get away with it, sometimes you don't. He said you have to play a much smarter first or third quarter here. On Naperville Central side, they felt they dominated the football game. Great defensive first half, controlled the football, but just didn't get the ball in the end zone. They feel that the third quarter is going to be the difference in the game. Back to you. All right, Matt, thank you. That was D.J. Johnson with a huge carry to start this second half. Puts him over the 100-yard mark, Mark. Again, he's coming in with eight, 11 carries, 86 yards into the first half. That's about a 20-yard gain, so he's up to about 107, 108 yards. Phenomenal play. And again, that's, about, that's been the huge bright spot. They kind of eased back late in the second quarter on D.J. Johnson, and uh, I think they're going to probably go back to him a little bit more in this uh, third. Play action, they fake it to Johnson, Pearson to Churambolo. Inside the 30, and finally dragged down Todd at the 33-yard line. First and 10 for the Red Hawks. They're coming out smoking here to start this second half. They are definitely coming out smoking, and Jason Nolda was a key to that play. He had a huge block, held up two Tiger players, and Churambolo, where he probably would have been brought down at about the 35-yard line, Picked up another 10 just because of the blocking by Jason Ola. Jason's doing it on both sides, both sides of the ball, Mark. Ryan Maloney is split wide to the far side for the Red Hawks. First and 10. 
This is Chirambolo, the fullback. He goes straight up the middle for two yards. It'll be second down and eight. Well, again, it was. this is going to be key, Mark, because they're getting within that 20-yard line. And the first two times that the, the Red Hawks got into that red zone, they had two penalties. One brought them back out. They had an opportunity for a field goal. Converted the second time. He did not. So tough, tough breaks here for the... Second man through, Todd, it's Johnson. Nowhere to go. He'll try to cut it around the corner, but no room there. Nice defensive play that time, Todd. And we're going to take another look at it by number 17, Terrence Moore, who had a hip problem earlier in the season. Didn't show it there, though. Came in with a hip flexor tonight, but again, Johnson trying to bounce it out to the left. Gets stu excuse me, stuck up by Crosby, and it looks like there could have been a... A face mask on that play, but I think the the umpire already threw his flag, so he's only got one to one to throw. So this will be a third down situation, third and about seven for Naperville Central, the 24 yard line. Look at this mismatch over here, Mark. You've got a four, a five-four corner against Todd Grotbeck, six-five. So he's got about a foot differential here. I'd be looking for it. Pearson's looking over there, and that's exactly where they're going to Grot back, and he dropped it. It was thrown just a little bit behind him that time, Todd, and incomplete. It'll bring up fourth down. Well, again, his hands are good, but you got to you got to deliver the ball to him. And he again, they had the mismatch they've been looking for all night. They had Doug Arden again, 5'5", 147, against Todd Grot back, 6'5". He's got a whole foot, 12 inches on him, 210, but he. Pearson just delivered the ball just a little bit behind him. So it's going to bring up a fourth down situation. Again, Pearson already tried, excuse me, Nolda already tried a 41-yarder. Plenty of leg. It looks like it's wide to the right. So Nolda is one for three in field goal attempts here tonight. Well, he went one down the middle. Red Hawks remain on top by a score of three to nothing. Ten oh nine left to play in the third quarter. So it'll be Wheaton Warrenville South. First and ten. From the twenty yard line. They'll keep it on the ground. They'll go up the middle for a gain of two. Second down and eight. Well, we're gonna flash back to the six A championship game last last year moving into the third quarter of last year's championship game the Red Hawks were down seven until Mr. Versatility Jim Tumulty who's now at Augustana University with a torn ACL takes in takes it in from five yards out pulling his team to within one instead of kicking the extra point coach Bungie goes for two and gets Lavery in the hits Cade in the back of the end zone after Naperville Central 15 Wheaton Warrenville South 14. Broca goes to the air. He's got his receiver, Justin Penn. Nice defensive effort there, bringing him down at the 25-yard line. Johnson was there defensively. Pick up a five, so third and two opportunity here for the Tigers. Tigers have got to start revving it up a little bit, Mark. Well, this third quarter, Todd, that's when they score their most of their points. They've scored 59 points in this third quarter. They scored 56 in the second, but they were held to zero again here in the first half. So you've got to get this uh, engine moving. Broca and a fumble, and he's going to be down at the 18-yard line. That's Billy Gerlesitz. Mishandles the pitch from Broca. We're going to take another look at it right here. Well, again, the pitch back to Gerlesitz. Broca pitches it back, just doesn't get the handle on it. And all Billy can do is just fall on it about the 18-yard line. So it's, again, what we've kind of seen throughout the first half, four plays and out for the Tigers. Justin Penn, there you see him, punting from his own five-yard line. Gets it away, pretty good punt. Barrett from the 48-yard line. Oh, 
Yeah, you can see that one coming, Mark. Yeah, there's the flag, and Barrett gets forced out of bounds at the 38-yard line. Flag right at midfield. Yeah, and he, we saw that from up here. He got the big O's from the fan, but number two, Mike Steffens, was hit somebody, hit a Tiger player in the back when he really didn't need to because the Tiger player was already out of the pursuit of Barrett. So it's going to be clipping. It's going to back him up even further. So here comes the punt. Barrett almost overruns it, takes it high off of his shoulder, comes back to his right, and you'll see it coming into the play right there. Number two, Nick Steffens, gets the clip. So that's going to back him way up to the 35-yard line where they would have had been in Tiger territory. Now they're back on their own 35 starting the Under eight minutes to go in the third quarter. The Red Hawks leading it by three, three to nothing. Lintner going in motion to the far side. Pearson with a long count. Air it out to Grotbeck, and again, oh, Todd, it's a little bit underthrown, nearly picked off at midfield. Well, Pearson pumped that time. And again, with that bad knee, Grotbeck really couldn't move that that quickly. Give it the fake that he would like to. And Arden was just waiting, camping out. And I don't know, we couldn't see because he was right in front of the, the bench of the Red Hawks, but it looked like that ball would have been a, not, a great opportunity for Arden to come up with an interception. Second down and 10. Pearson on the delay. Gives it to DJ Johnson who trips, Johnson slips I should say, at the 34-yard line. It'll be third down and 10 for Central. Well, that play was snuffed John out by Garrow. number 44, John Garrow. Yard, doing a nice job of staying home himself. 34. Johnson really nowhere to go that particular. That's about the first time he's been greeted at the line of scrimmage by anybody. Uh, again, over 100 yards already in the third quarter. DJ's, again, that was one of the keys of the game. And they need to come up with, they need to come up big here though, Mark. Third down and 11, Pearson. Good protection over here to the near side, and it is incomplete. Once again, intended for Todd Grotbeck, and it'll bring up fourth down, and the Red Hawks are going to have to punt. Well, again, you're going to your, your go-to man. Pearson's got to deliver the ball, and that ball was just a little bit out of, out of the reach of Grotbeck. So, again, I think he's had three opportunities for the tight end, the wide receiver Grotbeck, and missed all three of them. So Cop back at the 22-yard line, ready to punt it away for the Red Hawks. High snap, but Cop gets it off. And Crosby will let it bounce, and it'll go to the 25-yard line. Well, the Tigers, where the Tigers will take over, first and 10 with six minutes and 54 seconds left to play here in the third quarter. We mentioned Naperville Central and the rest of their schedule for the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South. Next week, they will host Glenbard East, and then they're away for the final two regular season games. They're at West Chicago, and then they're at Naperville North, and we'll bring you that ball game later on. The Tigers have got to get something going. Other than the 41-yard opening kickoff drive, kickoff returned by Crosby. They've only had 29 yards through the first half mark, so they got to get on track offensively. Tigers keep it on the ground. Billy Gerlesitz, the ball carry. He goes up the middle to about the 29, a pickup of four on the play, so second down and six. Well, again, Coach Bungie has definitely done a nice job of scouting this number one team in the state. And he's put together a very good plan to come in here and uh, pretty much take it to them. They, they, they've done it on the uh, down in the trenches, Mark. That's where the game's been won, in my opinion. Second down and six for the Tigers. Broke on the option now. The pitch to Crosby over here to the near side and gets forced out of bounds nicely by, I believe that was D.J. Williams, number nine, or D.J. Johnson, I should say, number nine, forcing him out of bounds. Walter Bucky did a nice job of closing on that play. Number 85 for the Red Hawks. Just closed real quick, took the line of pursuit, and ran the Tiger offensive player out of bounds. So nice play by Bucky that time. Big third down and two situation here. Red Hawk crowd making some noise here. Tight formation, Mark. Yeah. Rilko will go to the air. 
And he's got his man, Justin Penn, and I believe he's going to dive over for that first down at the 38-yard line. I think, Mark, that's the second first down of the game for the Tigers. Here you'll see it again. Just a quick pass, broke a three-step drop, boom, delivers it. Just across the marker, Penn knew where he had to go, got it, and hit the hit, got the first down for the Tigers. So first and 10, Wheaton Warrenville south from the 37-yard line, their own 37. Broca. That looks like Billy Gerlesitz again, gets to the 39-yard line. Let's go down to the field and Matt Dozen. Matt, what have you got down there for us? Thanks, gentlemen. Well, Naperville Central has really bottled up the Wheaton Warrenville South ground attack. And when they have gone to the air, they've been having their problems, mainly because they're double teaming Justin Penn. That's because Chris Stetler, their leading receiver with 17 catches coming into the season, came for nearly 300 yards, is out with a torn ACL. I asked him if he's out for the year. He said he's getting a second opinion next week. Back to you guys. And Todd, that is a big blow for the Tigers offensively. Chris Stetler was the main receiver for this Tiger team. He was Broca's favorite target. Again, he also holds on PATs and and and, uh, and field goals, which may play a factor in this game a little later. You bring somebody in in the fifth, se fifth game of the season who's not as uh, well-versed as your standard holder. You know, he ran back kickoffs, although Crosby did a nice job, 41 yards on the opening kickoff, but he ran by, back kickoffs and punts, and that is a big loss to this Tiger squad, and it's, it's showing a little bit tonight. Unless it's gained three yards on that play. So second down and seven. Brilka to the air. Nearly picked off by D.J. Johnson. Oh, my. He wanted that one. <laughs> well, he definitely wanted that one. He was closing on that ball fast. Did a nice job of reading the where the play was going to go. Brilka delivered again. Brilka's got a nice arm. I'm impressed with the way he's he's he throws the ball. He sets up very nicely. Delivers a nice spir tight spiral. Boom, there comes DJ looking to close and looking to intercept. Justin Penn, the intended receiver. So at the 40-yard line now, third down and seven. See if Broca goes to the air again. He does under some pressure. Gets forced out of the pocket. He'll keep it himself and get brought down at the 43-yard line. Some heavy pursuit. Mike Mamoon was there. Mike Mamoon, Lee Smentek, and number 72, Tom Weller, just chasing down Brilka. Brilka, you know, with his 60% completion average and his 700 yards is three of six for 33 yards, Mark. So he has been held in check tonight at least to the 501 mark here in the third quarter. Justin Penn in to punt the ball for the Tigers. Back is Dave Barrett, number 31 for the Red Hawks. Another good punt, Barrett from his own 21 yard line. Called a fair catch, first and 10 Red Hawks from the 21 and Todd, this defensive line you mentioned, it's Smentek, Weller and Mamoon have done one heck of a job here tonight so far. Their pursuit and clogging up that, that interior line has certainly hurt Tim Broca. Again, only 33 yards uh, or 33 yards in the air and not too many on the ground. He's just not having a good night. And But again, he's got 41 yards on the ground. But, you know, again, not up to the level of where he usually is at this point in the game. So first and 10 now, Naperville Central. Four and a half minutes left to go in this third quarter. It's Trimbolo who will get maybe a yard on the play. Second down and nine. Brad Camden with the stick. You know, one thing that we had heard about this Wheaton Warrenville South squad, their defensive squad, their team speed was just immense. I mean, they've got a lot of speed on this defense. It's, you know, with DJ Johnson and the way he's been running through that, you know, they've got to come up with some sort of mix to break that down and, and you know get the ball back for their offensive offensive squad they need to get some points on the board it's getting late in the game second down and nine for coach joe bungie and his offensive squad the pitch to johnson and johnson gets tripped up in the backfield but there is a flag on the play brad camden the senior linebacker was there on the stop he leads this tiger defense in tackles with 32. that's a clip mark it's going to go against the red hawks 
Again, I think DJ coming off to the right side didn't have an opportunity to break it out. And I think you'll see the clip coming up right there. Cherambolo probably, no, excuse me, it was right there on number 41. Camden got hit in the back. Luckily, it wasn't a, a serious hit, but uh, serious enough to move the, well, maybe move the Red Hawks back. They're thinking about it now. Tell you, Todd, as this game moves on, with this game being so close, the penalties and the turnovers are just that much magnified. And this is a big penalty against Naperville Central, pulling them back all the way to about the, well, they're going to spot it half the distance to the goal line, so they're going to push it back to the 11-yard line. Well, again, penalties are what kind of were their foil early in the, or in the first half, Mark. Each time, two times that they got inside the 20, inside the Tiger 20, they had a couple of penalties. Now, you know, they're getting pushed back into their own, own backyard, and... You know, as you said, key penalty or penalties at key times can uh, can turn the ball game around. Second down and 19. Pearson lets it fly. Ooh, that was up Ooh. there. <laughs> Number 44, John Garrow, was there. The ball right over that defender's hands. So it'll be third and 19. It almost looked as with the delivery of that pass that it was deflected by someone on the on the line because it wasn't close to growth back. And it just kind of had a, a funny wibble, wobble to it. Third and 19. Grotbeck is split wide here to the near side. Adcock to the far side. This is Trumbolo, the fullback, who gets it on the delay. And Trumbolo breaks a couple of tackles. And he'll have a first down across the 40 to the 43-yard line. Wow, that certainly brings this crowd back to life, Mark. That's exactly what they needed. Again, just a very basic play. They're going with... Bare bones football, just smash mouth football. Joe Cherambolo with a nice job finding his holes, moving off to the left after he had nothing to the right, jumps all the way up, and there's a touchdown saving tackle by number 21 there, Kevin Whit Whitkanick. Just a, a huge play right there when they were pushed back into their in, onto their 11 yard line mark. Chirumbolo with nine carries, 54 yards. This is DJ Johnson, and he'll get snuffed in the backfield. Brought down at the 40-yard line. That's going to be a loss of about four, so it'll be second down and 14 on the play. Crosby, Camden, pretty much anybody on that time, on that particular play for the Tigers were in there. But again, just when it looks like Central's one of these cardiac teams, Mark, this year, doing a great job, but you know they get backed up on a penalty almost to their own backyard, and boom, Turnbull breaks a big one. Up the middle, gives them the first down, gives them a new, a new lease on life, and they gotta keep the ball moving. Loss of three on that play, actually, second down and 13. Pearson to the air, rolling out here. This is Turnbull, he gets it. Brought down at the 44 yard line, a gain of about four, so it'll bring up third down and nine. Yeah, it looks like he picked up about one. Cherambolo, as he turned, looks like he had almost exposed the ball. Dropped it right to him, juggled it a little bit, was lucky to pull it back in. Got back just past the original line of scrimmage. So as you said, Mark, third down and nine. Just under two minutes in the third quarter. A 25-yard field goal by Jason Nolda, the only scoring in this ball game. Central leading it three to nothing. Pearson's moving fast. Got to watch that delay of game call. Third down and nine. Pearson to the air. It's flushed out here to the near side. Let's it fly, and it's picked off. This is Brad Camden. And Camden brings it back to the 46-yard line. And turnover could kill Naperville Central here. Bad decision by Pearson. He was trying to force the ball in there. And Camden just stepped right in front of the, of the delivered ball and picked it off. Nice job by the Tigers to come up with the turnover, the big turnover. The turnovers and penalties are what's going to kill you in a game like this. Low scoring. Here you'll see it. Pearson, again, flushed out of the pocket, off to the right, delivers the ball, and there was nobody there. It was definitely behind Grotbeck. And Camden does a nice job to pick it up, get back to the 45-yard line. So a big break for the Tigers. Minute and 32 seconds left to play in this third quarter. 
Other action. Lincoln Way is at Juliet. St. Charles, a big ball game hosting Larkin. East Aurora is hosting Antioch. DeKalb is in Death Valley against Wabanze Valley. Now keep it on the ground. Crosby. No room there. It's odd. Nice job by that defensive line. Smentek. Smentek. Mamoon. And our friend number 34, Jason Nolda. There you see Pearson. Probably wishing he could have that last pass back. Other action, Todd. Lake Park at Elgin tomorrow. Larkin at St. Charles. I mentioned West Aurora at Streamwood. And Oswego is at Fenton. This is a big series, Mark, if, if the Red Hawks can hold them here. Second down and eight. Again, the option. This is Crosby coming back here to Brilka. Well overthrown. The coverage, Charles Turak. And that play did not develop at all. Well, the last time they did it, they, they ran Crosby off to the right side, and he threw it down to a streaking... Justin Penn. This time they were going to try to fool him, send Broca off in the flat off to the left side in a kind of a throwback type situation, and it didn't fool anybody that time. So third down, ball at the 44-yard line of Naperville Central. It'll be third and nine. Huge Red Hawk players, Todd, getting this crowd into it. Huge, huge play right here, Mark. Broke it to the air. He looks over to the far side. He's got his man. Wow. That looks like Penn. And that's going to be a first down Brilka's for the Tigers. A well-executed play that time. From Broca to Justin Penn. First down for the Tigers. Really impressed with the way Broca delivers the ball. Five-yard drop. Got great protection and boom. Right there to Penn on the outside of the, the only place where he could catch it. Great call by Coach Thorne and great delivery and execution by his Tiger team. First and 10, Tigers, a half a minute left to play here in this third quarter. Tigers are driving at the 30-yard line of Naperville Central, and on the delay, they keep it on the ground, and they get inside the 25 to the 23. It's Billy Gerlesitz. Mark, that last pass by Tim Broca to his wide receiver, or his set-in, Justin Penn, was only the fourth First down of this game for the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South. It's kind of unbelievable to think that the number one team in the state has been shut out to this point, only had four first downs and <laughs> only 105 yards offensively. You know, zero points. Tough to, tough to imagine. We played the end of three quarters. The Red Hawks leading it by a score of three to nothing over the Tigers, but Wheaton South is driving. We'll be back. Tonight's TV4 Game of the Week is sponsored in part by Horizon Chevrolet. 1540 West Ogden Avenue in Naperville. Call 357-6100. And by... Brucker and Rickliff Brothers at 355-7770. I'm Joe Novak, new head football coach at NIU. Since I've arrived here, we've been working hard to make ourselves a better football team. We're doing a lot of this. Let's go, Dan. Come on, Dan. Come on, Dan. Push it up. Push it up. And a whole lot of this. We're doing all this so you can enjoy some of this. Big time fun is back. See you this fall. Back here at Memorial Stadium as we get set for fourth quarter action. There you see it. Three to nothing. Naperville Central. Brilka pitching it to Kelly Crosby. Crosby gets to the line of scrimmage and maybe a yard. It'll be third down and six, and there you take a look at Christian Pearson. Just before the, just before we came back up, Pearson was surrounded by his teammates, Todd Grotebeck in particular, saying, hey guys, we still got one quarter left. We'll put that interception behind us, and we're gonna go back out, and we're gonna, we're gonna do our offensive job. So, you know, this is huge. This is, a, I think they're gonna give this first down to the Tigers because of the spot of the ball. It looked like he picked it up. 
Yeah, he did. Amazing how I can see that close <laughs> up here, isn't it, Mark? First and 10 Tigers. Todd, at the beginning we mentioned that the Red Hawks with only seven juniors on their offensive squad. Wheaton Warrenville South, their offensive unit starting 10 seniors and only one junior. Yeah, again, experience and a lot of those kids played last year. Um, it's just, you know, you, you, when you get in that fourth quarter, you certainly want that experience. It looks like the wind might have picked up a little bit. It's in the face of the the Tigers, but it certainly hasn't been a factor in, in the, the delivering of the ball at all. So, you know, especially with the way Broke has been throwing. Um, but as you said, that fourth quarter, uh, you want that senior experience in there. First and 10, Broke will keep it himself. Jason Nolda was there on the tackle inside the 20 to about the 19, so second down and eight. But then again, if you look on the defensive side of the Red Hawks, you see an awful lot of seniors too. So, you know, there's a there's a lot of seniors in there, and there's a lot of guys playing for for a lot right now, Mark. Because again, they saw them, they they take a 13 and 0. The Red Hawks take a 13 and 0 slate down downstate to the 6A finals, get beaten a real tough game. Now, there's a lot of emotion going on down on the field right now. Second down for the Tigers. Broca on the option, pitches it back to Crosby. D.J. Johnson was there to wrap up Crosby, a gain maybe of about a yard, so it'll be third down at about six. Well, again, the, the third down play here, third and about seven. You know, so they've got a long ways to go here. This defense, if they can hold and force a field goal, um, you know, might be key. It looks like we're going to have a timeout called by the Tigers. So exactly. bring, the, bring the squad over, says Coach Bungie. Let's, let's chat about this one, guys. Ten minutes and 21 seconds left to play. We'll keep it here, and we'll go back to the fourth quarter of last year's state championship game between the Red Hawks of Naperville Central and the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South. We flash back a year or so ago. Well, as we flash back last year's championship game in the fourth quarter, quarterback Tim Broca finished a flawless game and showed us why he's a special player hitting wide out. Joey St. Meyer himself had a stretch fracture in his foot from 20 yards out. Central would score a late touchdown, but the two-point conversion was stopped by Wheaton Warrenville South as they pulled off a huge upset, beating number one ranked, the number one ranked Red Hawks, and the Tigers celebrated their second state title in four years. 22 to 21 was the final score of that championship game. Critical play right here. Third down and about seven for the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South. Mike, Mark, I guess if you're gonna put together a drive, you do it late. Eighth play of the drive, they've, you know, this is their longest drive to date. Again, five first downs, so not too many. Things are kind of, things have been kind of stingy on the offensive side, and the defense has been kind of tough. So this play is, is, is really big, Mark. Third down and seven. Watch for that quick pass, that tight formation. Broca to the fullback. And they are not going to get it. <laughs> and Walter Bucky comes out of there. And we got the stop. Not enough for that first down, Mark. It was Billy Gerlesitz tied up the middle. It'll be fourth down and about four yards. And wow. 14, so you're looking at about a 30, about a 30-yard or 30-yard, 35-yard field goal here. David Foster, the senior. Uh, would do the kicking, but Broke is coming back into the game with fourth and about three and a half, four yards. Question: uh, This is a, this is a, you guess it call, Mark. 9:41 remaining. Broke to the air, and it oh. is incomplete. On downs, it will go to Naperville Central. The intended receiver was Justin Penn, and Broke just threw it to the left of Penn there. Penn turned in. Broke threw out. That's a huge turnover. Uh, you're down close, what, a 14-yard line? 24 and seven is what, 34-yard field goal? 32, something like that. Um, yeah, thank you. 31, 32-yard <laughs> field goal. And, you know, Broca just turns, throws the ball to the, to the left side, and Penn was going to the right. 
Little miscommunication there. Big turnaround. Let's see what. Let's see how Pearson rebounds from that uh, that interception. Keep it on the ground. This is DJ Johnson. Carries a couple of Tiger defenders across the 20 to the 23 yard line. A gain of five. It'll be second down. Okay, actually, gain is six. Second down and four. 16 carries, 117 yards for Mr. DJ Johnson, number nine back there. Again, he's your go to man, and they have been going to him. And again, this is when those big hogs up front, you can't forget them. Cope, Parrish, Walters, Gayeth, and Weller are just doing a phenomenal job moving the Tigers off the line of scrimmage. They've got to continue to do that. Second down and four. They'll keep it on the ground. Churumbolo is has the first down for Naperville Central. They'll keep it on the ground, and the clock continues to run. Under nine minutes to go in the ballgame. Well, there's still plenty of time. There's a lot of time left, nine minutes. It's almost an eternity here. But the way that the Red Hawks have been moving the ball, and again, ground control, eating that clock away, just tearing away at it. That's what they want to continue to do. Uh, they gotta got to make sure they hold on to the ball. Cherambolo and Johnson haven't had a fumble yet in this game, so they got to be careful. Pearson to Johnson. Johnson cuts back, and he's got some room to the 40, 45, midfield, and gets shoved out of bounds at the 42 and yard a flag. line. Kevin Witkenak brought him down, and the flag. That, I think that was frustration on Witkenak's part. He, drug, he had him out of bounds at about the 38-yard line, but he pushed him way out and then brought him down a re, pretty hard. But that was a great job by DJ of improvising. Again, going off to the right side, almost like brought down there. Right there Todd. Sure did. And then he just darts this way. He turns that corner, gets the ball on the other hand, puts the face mask out. That might have been why Winnetka kind of drug him down kind of hard. But that's going to be another 15 from the 39-yard line. So down to the 24. Huge, huge play. I tell you, whatever the outcome of this ball game is, Todd, uh, Wheaton Warrenville South was ranked number one, but Naperville Central wasn't even ranked in the top 20, and I think we can say that they are a top 20 team. They are definitely a top 20 team. Actually, one of the polls had them coming to 22, so, um, you know, they're up there, and this is this would be a huge jump for for this squad to get, to, to, you know, maybe take down a, a, the number one team in the state. But this game is far from over, Mark. First and 10, Naperville Central. Pearson will pitch it to Churambolo. He'll cut it back for about four on the play. Second down and six. Let's go down to the field and Matt Dozen. Matt, what have you got for us? Well, guys, this has really been a defensive dogfight. When we talked to Coach Joel Bungie during the, during the week, he said a key to the game is the team that hits harder is going to win this game. He said, we enjoy hitting, and so far they've done the majority of it. They've been the more physical team, and right now they're in control. All right, Matt. Gain of four from Churambolo. Well, Second that, down and six time. That sounds like Coach Bungie. He likes smash mouth football, and he certainly get it out of his offensive line tonight, Mark. Pearson giving it to Churambolo again, who breaks a couple of tackles and a first down for Big Joe at the 10-yard line, the sure-handed one. <laughs> Again, Big Joe at 6'1", 220. The junior goes up against number four, Doug Arden, in the back, def defensive backfield for the Tigers. He meets the 5'5", 147 senior, and boom, he bounces it out to the left, and there's, hey, Doug Arden did a nice job of taking him right on. But just a, 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 an awesome run by this, this backfield of Cherambolo and Johnson tonight. First and ten, Churambolo hit at the line, breaks a couple of tackles, breaks two tackles. He keeps going inside the five, close oh. to a touchdown. They're going to spot it, Todd, at the one-yard line, but what a run by Churambolo. Wow, Churambolo again bounced it out to the right side, and I think he, brought, he Doug Arden came up, and they just were kind of pushing one to, one to one, and somebody was going to go out of bounds. They didn't know whether it was going to be inside the, the touchdown stripe or not. But here comes Cherambolo, and Ardens comes up to meet him, and they're both pushing, and Cherambolo almost gets it into the end zone, but just a little bit shy. Second down, Red Hawks at the one. It's D.J. Johnson over the top. Touchdown. D.J. with his 11th touchdown of the season. Might not be a bigger one. <laughs> to date, I don't think there is. 7.23 remaining in the ballgame, Mark. 
and that is a huge, huge play. Down uh, attempt by the Tigers, 86 yards, capped off by DJ's one-yard TD plunge over that offensive line. You got to mention those guys again: Dan Coop, TJ Parrish, John Walters, Ben Gate, and Tom Weller, just doing a phenomenal job. Cherambolo, Joe Cherambolo, nine carries, 83 yards. He's got 56 receiving. It's, they're just getting all kind of productivity out of their two backs tonight, Mark. So Nolda, the left-footed kicker, gets it off to the five. This is Crosby. Plus the 20, a couple of nice blocks up front and finally gets brought down at the 35-yard line. First and 10 for the Tigers with seven minutes and 21 seconds remaining. I tell you, this is going to put this, we're going to see just how how strong this Wheat Warrenville South team is, Mark. They are down by two scores, 721. They're the number one team in the state. They certainly don't want to go down here in a DVC battle and, and come out a loser. They are probably going to turn it up a notch. They're going to have to turn it up a notch here and get it moving. Broca will keep it. Now he'll pitch it to Crosby. And Crosby gets shoved out of bounds at the 43-yard line, a gain of about five yards on the play. Broca just does a beautiful job of running this offense, Mark. He was in the grasp. He was in the grasp of one of the Red Hawk defenders. And just as the, at the last moment, flipped the ball back to Crosby. Crosby picks up seven. Does a nice job. Gets out of bounds. Stops the clock. Again, there's the defense, the offensive line. That's that's your your MVPs in my opinion. I mean, G, again, we said it early. The offensive line and DJ Johnson has got to come up big, and they certainly have so far tonight, Mark. I'll tell you, they really set the stage, Todd, early on in the ball game. Broca on the option again. He'll pitch it back. And a huge hit by Nolda. Just crushing Billy Gerlesis. <laughs> and Nolda coming up big right here. Jason Nolda. There's the down block by Penn. Doesn't really help anybody, but there's boom. Nolda, he gets some help by from David Barrett and Lee Smentek. Huge, huge defensive play. Again, when the Red Hawks needed the defense, they've, they've come up strong tonight, Mark. And that, you know, as long as they don't have a mental letdown here in the last six minutes and 36 seconds, they're going to, they may walk away with this atop the DVC and with a big, big win on their, on their backs. Broca to the air over on the far side, incomplete. Pass intended for Justin Penn. DJ Johnson was there on the coverage. Again, a beautiful pass by Broca. Great coverage. But again, just a little bit, little bit tall for Justin Penn out there. Penn six one, couldn't reach up and grab that, grab that ball. Johnson did a nice job of covering, but I'm, I'm very impressed with the way Broca has been delivering it. So Todd, fourth down and four now. The Tigers going for it here with six and a half minutes remaining. They really have no choice. Fourth and four, Brilka from his own 41-yard line. They pitch it, and they're not going to get it. Wow. A gain of maybe a yard on the play, and we're going to take another another look at it here, Todd, but the pitch to Gerlesis. Again, the pitch out to Billy Gerlesis, and again, Mamu did a nice job of, of, of following down the line. Again, nobody, no place to go for Gerlesis, and again, that's the second time that the Tigers have had the ball on a fourth down, hadn't been able to convert. This time it's much more costly because the Red Hawks take over at the Tiger 43 yard line. I, and one thing I did see Mark, before the, the offense came out all the linemen were running up and down keeping warm for the Red Hawks. You know, they are pumped up about this game. First and ten, Naperville Central and it's Churambolo bouncing off a couple of tackles, gets to the outside to the 40 yard line. Gain of three yards on the play, second and seven. Coach Sternad with, excuse me, Steve Sternad with the stop. But again, Cherambolo did a nice job of continuing to move, keep the ball in play. Five minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the game. You know, this is, ex oh, this is just, Coach Bungie couldn't have scripted it better, I don't think, Mark. Just a phenomenal job by his offensive line, just you know, playing real tough football. Adcock and Grotbeck are your whiteouts, but they are going to keep it on the ground. Johnson is going to get buried in the backfield. 
A loss of two on the play. Number 17, Terrence Moore, the strong safety, came up. Was one of three Tiger defenders there. And number 91, Eugene Beard, who we saw in one of the flashbacks a little bit earlier, I think picked off Tim Lavery last year in the 6A final game down there. He was in, uh, in on that tackle too, but we haven't called his number too much tonight. Gene Beard leads this defensive team in sacks with eight. Nathan Kolbaba has four sacks for the Tigers. Pearson, give it to Chirambolo, and he'll get tripped up in the backfield by number 44, John Garrow, a senior defensive end. Garrow doing a nice job there. Again, not fooled by the delay draw. And Chirambolo with really no place to go. It's kind of clogged up in the middle. Had to try to bounce it outside. Had no luck out there, and Garrow was there to, to close for him. Cop from his own 42-yard line in the punt formation. We never know with Naperville Central here. I think we can call this one. I think this one will be pretty safe. I think this will be a punt here as they lead it by 10. Although one punt was blocked earlier, Mark, but I'm sure they'll set up for a return. And it'll go into the end zone. So the Tigers will take over. First and 10 from their own 20-yard line with exactly four minutes and 18 seconds remaining in this ball game. Mark Kruger and Todd Kibbe along with Matt Dozen coming to you from Memorial Stadium. With Naperville Central leading it by a score of 10 to nothing. Tonight's game is being brought to you by Adamos at 778-0325. That's 778-0325. First and 10 for the Tigers. Broca will keep it himself. He'll cut it up. Have it first down and more. Cuts back to the 40. And stopped at the 49-yard line. A great run by Broca. 29-yard gain, Mark. Again, you can't count these guys out. Broca doing a nice job. And again, now they're in that hurry-up offense. They're going to they're gonna keep the ball moving. You got to watch the cutback ability of Broca and, and his vision that he's got. Just over four minutes to go. Broca almost met in a backfield by Lee Smentic. Breaks the tackle to the 49-yard line of Naperville Central. And did I mention that this game is being brought to you by Adamos at 1550 North Route 59 in Naperville? 778-0325. Is that about 495 a person? About for their 495 catering? a person. Yeah, they do corporate catering as well. And trust me, excellent, excellent food by Adamos. Well, again, what, you got to watch Broca and his cutback abilities. Second down and eight, Todd. This is Crosby. And he'll get shoved out of bounds at the 47-yard line. Oh, a late flag. And that's a, probably a late hit or a face mask. Well, I think you saw number two, Charles Turak, drive Crosby out of bounds. And I don't know who's going to get the flag on this one. But um, it's obviously going to be an unsportsmanlike call. Personal foul, Personal the foul against the Red Hawks. Not a wise time to have that happen, especially when you're on the other team's side, <laughs> Mark. Three minutes and 19 seconds, a 15-yarder. That was not a wise play by the Red Hawks. Big 15 yards, and you certainly don't want to give them any more yards than they've there, and they're already getting. They're in that hurry-up offense. Uh, you know. The, all the way to the 33-yard line, Todd. First and 10, Tigers. They've danced with the penalty devil tonight. I mean, they certainly have had penalties at inopportune times, and that was certainly one of them. Split backfield for the Tigers. Broke to the air, and the flat is Justin Penn. And Penn gets inside the 25 to the 24-yard line. Walter Bucky, a six-foot, one-inch junior linebacker, was there to bring down Penn. Broca continues to go over, get the play from Coach Thorne, and comes back. Got just under, we just passed the three-minute mark. Mark. <laughs> and, I mean, this game's going to get exciting. It's going to be tough. Gain of seven, second down and three. Broca forced to go to the air again. He'll keep it himself. 
He's going to oh. have, I believe, a first down. Nice tackle that time by Verdoni. Verdoni did a nice job of closing. And again, that's where Broca is so spectacular. If you get him flushed out of the pocket, he can make things happen. He did, he did pick up the first down there. Again, he's looking downfield for a receiver, but decides to tuck it away. And Verdoni does a nice job of just stripping him down, getting him down to his ankles, and, and dragging him down at the 21-yard line. Coming up on two and a half minutes left to play in this ball game. And Broca looking over to the coaching staff, getting the play, calling it out, split backfield. And the give is to Crosby inside the 15 to the 14 yard line. And now Broca runs over to get another play. Yep. And they're again in their hurry up offense. That was a pretty big gain, Mark, about eight yards for Crosby. Again, now's the time to bend and not break if you're the Red Hawk defense. Second and a couple to the far side. It's Justin Penn up for grabs. Penn had it. And wow. he just lost it. The coverage there by D.J. Johnson. We're going to take another look at it. What a battle, Mark. That was just a beautifully, again, a beautifully thrown pass to Penn going to the back of the end zone. And you'll see Johnson with his eyes on the ball all the way, and he just sticks his hand there and at the last minute knocks it away. David great defensive ba great Barrett, defensive play. Barrett came over there from his strong safety position. So this will be a third down and two situation. We are under two minutes. Broca calling out the signal. Gives to Crosby, and Crosby will have the first down as he gets down to about the 10-yard line. The clock will stop with... A minute 49 to play. Broco, after that last pass, Mark, 5 of 11, only 42 yards. But again, you can never count this team out, and they are just phenomenally moving the clock down. We're going to have a timeout here, officials' timeout, for a measurement. Wheaton South coming into this ball game, 2 and 0 oh in the DuPage Valley Conference, and 5 and 0. Oh on the year. We're going to go back to last year's Class 6A championship game between Naperville Central and Wheaton Warrenville South. Well, this is a key. Obviously, Mark, they're within, they're in the red zone. We'll get to that flashback in a moment, but they're on the 11-yard line, and they certainly need to score. If they score, they need to score quick. First and ten, Broca to the air. He'll keep it himself, get tripped up, and he'll crawl almost, if you will, wow. to the eight-yard line. Jason Nolda. <laughs> that was a touchdown, Mark. That was Jason Nolda doing a nice job of sticking his hand in there and bringing Tim Broca down, at least knocking him off of his balance to bring him down. This is second quarter action from last year's state championship game. Down seven to nothing. Wheaton Warrenville South. Quarterback Tim Broca goes 61 yards on the option to tie the ball game. And it was this play that sent a message to Naperville Central that the Tigers were not intimidated by the number one Red Hawks. They took a 14 to seven halftime lead. And now tonight, Todd, the Red Hawks are not intimidated by Wheaton Warrenville South being number one coming into this ball game. I certainly don't think so. This team has come in inspired, done a nice job. Again, we, we keyed it at the beginning of the game. One of the keys was to be that offensive line just to dig in and play really tough and good fundamental football. DJ Johnson and his running has been the key and they have just, they haven't been intimidated by this number one ranking. And again, I wouldn't surprise, be surprised if we might see these two teams a little bit later in the year again, Mark, playing it again. Seems like we always do. Second down and eight for the Tigers. Looking for in the corner, it's Justin Penn. Did he stay in bounds? Who That's caught it? Question. Touchdown, <laughs> they, Justin Penn. Both of them are on the ball. DJ's going to come up with it, but the tie, I think the tie goes to the offensive player, Penn, with the nice pick. Wow. Todd, you mentioned this ball game is far from over. Wow, that was just, a, again, Brilka and his arm is just doing a phenomenal job. There he goes. It looks like, oh, over his right shoulder, just a phenomenal catch by Justin Penn. 
to put the Tigers on the board at the 126 mark of the game, or the fourth quarter. So now Justin Penn will come in for the extra point attempt. The kick by Penn is good, so with one minute and 26 seconds left to play in this DuPage Valley Conference showdown, it's the Red Hawks 10 and the Tigers of Wheaton Warrenville South 7, and we'll be back. Hi everyone, I'm Tell Draper. I'm Missy Jerfita. We're your hosts for Jones Intertable Connections, a brand new cable program geared to... Well, you've got the hands line up there for the Red Hawks, which is all their skilled players. Uh, the running backs, the wide receivers, the defensive backs are going to be on the line, and they're definitely going to be looking for that onside kick. But just a beautifully orchestrated drive by Tim Broca. Ten plays, 80 yards. Broca is six, six completions out of 12 attempts, 53 yards, one TD, one interception, and that last 11-yard touchdown pass to Penn, or Justin Penn, was just a phenomenal, phenomenal toss. So there's the onside kick attempt by Foster. Ball is loose. Looks like Central has it. And they do, Todd, at the 40, at their own 48-yard line. Guess who Guess who came up with the, the recovery, Mark? Jason Nolda. Jason Nolda. He's been doing it on both sides. Again, we called his name a lot on the uh, on the defensive side, but he's been doing a good good job blocking. Did a great job there of covering the ball and just and not letting the intimidation of the onside kick come to him. So now you just grind the ball out, Mark. You got, I, think, I think the Tigers have all their timeouts. I think they used, I think one. used one. Yeah. So I think they've got two left. So you've got to at least have a first down. Trimbolo. Well, actually, it's going to be Pearson. He's going to keep it himself. Get to about midfield. A gain of two. And there's the timeout by Wheaton Warrenville South. Clock stops with one minute and 19 seconds remaining. Well, apparently they didn't want to chance the opportunity of, of a fumble so again the quick snap to Pearson there you see a minute 19 remaining in this game kind of, this probably isn't the type of game that we would have thought coming into it Mark again the Tigers averaging 34 points a game the Red Hawks 29 both of these teams defenses have definitely came in here today and uh, they're sending a message that you know, even though we, you know, our offenses have been getting all the pub, we're out here and we're, you know, we're doing a lot of work too. Both teams coming into this ball game undefeated in conference play. Wheaton Warrenville South 2-0 in the conference. Naperville Central 3-0. Their only loss, a non-conference loss to Lincoln Way. Naperville Central and Coach Joe Bungie Todd, we mentioned it, has played a phenomenal game here. Really, all the way around, we talk about the individual play of a Nola, of a DJ Johnson, but uh, really the offensive line, the defensive line, this whole team really picked it up here tonight. Well, I think that's the heart and soul of this squad, and I think that's kind of the heart and soul of Joe Bungie. It's, you know, he, he's, he's just a, a great thinker and a great football player, and he translates that to his players, and, and they... They, they perform out on the field for him. So on second down and eight, it's Pearson once again up the middle. He'll get maybe a yard. It'll be third down and seven. I don't think the Tigers have any, obviously they don't have any more timeouts. So it's at the one minute mark right now. Wow, this would just be a huge win for the Red Hawks if they can go here and run this game out. They're going to have to snap the ball one more time, Mark. And obviously, if they pick up the first down, that's it. But they may, the Tigers may force a punt if they can't come up with those seven or eight yards. Again, you can't count out the number one team in the state. And they're going to take the penalty. They're to delay a game against Naperville Central. So they'll snap the ball one more time, Todd, and could be it. 34 seconds. It's going to be a, uh, wow. <laughs> uh, what a game. I want to ask you, I asked uh, Matt Dozen earlier before the game if there was any added pressure on these Tigers coming into tonight's game, number one in the state throughout the entire year. And I don't know, they, I'm not sure. What do you think? 
Well, I think they came in a little tentative. I don't think their level of play has been really challenged to this point. Uh, Wheat North gave them a pretty good game, but but I think when they come in and they have to play, you know, the number one or uh, last year's number one team, uh, 13 and 0. You know, this is definitely a challenge for them, and uh, there might have been some pressure on the Tigers, but uh, the Red Hawks certainly uh, came in loose and uh, ready to ready to play a game. Pearson will just go to the ground right at the 45-yard line. Clock running, 22 seconds, 21 seconds, and That's that it. should be it. Wow. The Red Hawks of Naperville Central are in first place in the DuPage Valley Conference, knocking off the number one team in the state, the Wheaton Warrenville South Tigers, by a score of 10 to 7. The Red Hawks' Todd Kibbe getting a sweet taste of revenge after last year's state title game. Definitely a sweet, sweet taste of revenge. They have came, they came into this game, they took control of the offensive line, the line of scrimmage. DJ Johnson did exactly what he needed to do. He ended up with over 120 yards, got the only touchdown for the Red Hawks tonight. The offensive line, you gotta mention them again. I know we've done it all night, but they have just done a great job. Brian Berta was in there at times. Tom Weller, Ben Gaith, John Walters, TJ Parrish, Dan Coop. They all did a phenomenal job for the offense. The defensive line for the Red Hawks, also a phenomenal job. Mamoon, Weller going both ways, Smentek. You know, you, you mention, you can mention just about everybody on this squad. They all contributed. They all did a phenomenal job of, of pulling it all together, bending and not breaking. They had a few penalties that almost broke their back, but uh, they, they withstood. They did a nice job. They're going to come out a winner tonight. And, you know, I, like I said, I, we may see these two teams sometime in November again um, battling it out one more time. I tell you, before this ball game, it would be no surprise. I was just thinking to myself that the Red Hawks knocked off these Tigers. I mean, as I mentioned, their only loss came to Lincoln Way, 30-13. to 13. They lost to Lincoln Way, Todd, the fifth-ranked team in the state. They're at Joliet tomorrow, but uh, I mean, Lincoln Way is for real, and so are these Red Hawks. Well, I think these Red Hawks are going to start going up in this uh, top 20 list that they're not on right now. I think you're going to see them real quick up with uh, up in the top 10. Uh, this game should elevate them to that level. And again, not to take anything away from this this Wheaton Warrenville South Tiger team, they came in, they played a pretty good ball game. I'm sh I'm sure Coach Thorne is a little bit. Uh, disappointed with the way his, his line worked. They didn't have, I think they had one first down in the first half alone. <coughs> Excuse me, a couple of mental mistakes. They just couldn't get that, they just couldn't get it rolling on offense like Broke has been doing in the past. And, uh, you know, last week they had over 390 yards, I think almost 400 yards. So they were shut down tonight. They, they didn't play the better game. Central played the better game. And uh, there'll be another day for the Tigers of uh, Wheaton Warrenville South. 10 to 7 is your final here. Naperville Central going to 5 and 1 overall, 3 and 1 in the DuPage Valley Conference. Wheaton Warrenville South now 5 and 1 on the year and also 2 and 1 in conference play. And these two teams you mentioned certainly may match up later on in the season, in postseason, along with the Huskies of Naperville North, it seems like those three teams, no matter what their regular season schedule is, Todd, always meet somewhere in the playoffs. Yeah, they all those three, te three teams will always seem to be getting it. We're going to throw it right down to Matt. He's got a couple of the coaches from Naperville Central, Coach Nussbaum and Coach Irwin, on the field. All right, I'm here with Andy Nussbaum and John Irvin, a couple of gentlemen who orchestrated the defense tonight. And if I thought you guys played terrific football, came out of the locker room, with the intent of playing hard physical defense. Well, that's what we've been doing all year. We've been playing physical and pretty tough football. We're really proud of our kids. And, you know, we put in a couple wrinkles, but we felt like uh, as physical as we are, we just wanted to play our base stuff and see what happened. When you shut down a Tim Brilka in this Wheaton Warrenville South offense, your defense is really doing something. We made some specific directions to, to certain players about uh, what they should do about his speed because he really is a, is a great speedster. And it hurt us a lot in that in that second game last year. 
so uh, we, we had some specific things that we gave in terms of techniques that I think helped out. Now, John, I, I know the number one thing was to shut down the, de the uh, running game, but it seemed like their passing attack suffered without Chris Tetler in there. Uh, uh, Chris is an outstanding uh, receiver, and I'm sure that hurt them uh, quite a bit. It kind of limited some of their passing game, and uh, uh, that definitely hurt them. John, how much was last year's game, the revenge factor, how much was that talked about during this week? I'll tell you, a lot of people think it might have been, but uh, it really wasn't. You know, we're uh, a very young team this year. Uh, some, probably some of the seniors this year remember they are down there. But mainly, we're a junior squad, and uh, we really didn't say much about it. You know, this is this year, that, that's gone. That's last year's team. And, uh, you know, we just came out and played as hard as we could. It doesn't get easier. Next week, you have to travel. you got uh, the number six ranked team in the country, but I'm sure you're not even worried about that game right now. Well, it's nice to win this one, but... Uh, you know, when we beat a team like this, we feel like we can play with anybody in the country. So uh, we're going to go out there and uh, show them a little bit of what Illinois football is like. Gentlemen, congratulations. Spoke up the victory. Thanks for joining us today. Gentlemen, back to you. All right, Matt. Thank you very much. Once again, the final score, the Naperville Central Redhawks 10 and the Tigers of Wheaton-Warrenville South.